Today I've got a quick video for you from the shack. Hello and welcome back to Ham on the Air with KD2REU. Welcome to another video. This will be a quick one. Today, I'm going to talk about Ham, ham radio, radio Maps. I've had several viewers notice the colorful screen on my computer in recent videos and ask, what software am I using? The screen that was displayed is actually not software at all, but a background image that I use on the computer in my shack. This helps with locating stations, especially when I'm running digital modes. In ham radio, we assign station location based on a grid system. It's a little like GPS, only a whole lot simpler. The globe is divided, then further subdivided, into geographical sections that follow a logical pattern and make it easy to identify your home station operating location what we call our QTH, with just a few letters and numbers. It's basically your ham radio zip code that can be used as a quick way to locate a station with just a short code during a contest or a digital transmission. The International Telecommunication Union the ITU, is a United Nations organization. It created the most broad communication regions to help keep track of differing regulations and band plans for radio communication around the world. The International Amateur Radio Union, or IARU, is part of the ITU and manages how the zones specifically apply to amateur radio around the world. The broad regions are subdivided into many smaller regional ITU zones. A similar regional system of CQ zones is managed by CQ Magazine and is more widely used for contesting as a way to track long distance contacts. The regional systems work good for defining areas that are bound by common governance and regulations, but they aren't necessarily good for pinpointing where on a map a station may be located since some of the regions cover a very large area and others very small. A better way to pinpoint station location is by the Grid Square Locator, also known as the Maidenhead Locator System. This grid system is a geographical coordinate method based on a six-digit code used by amateur radio operators to determine a rough position on Earth similar to GPS. With origins dating back to the 1950s, the planet is divided equally into 324 fields, 18 north and 18 east of an origin point on the grid. Note that the grid system ignores the equator and simply has an origin point at the South Pole, negative 90 degrees latitude, and sweeps northward and eastward from 180 degree longitude, roughly the international dateline, in increments of 20 degrees of longitude and 10 degrees of latitude. Each of the fields has a two-letter identifier. The first letter indicates how far east of the original line, and the second letter indicates how far north. The first 18 letters of the alphabet are used running from AA to RR. Each of the fields is further subdivided into 100 squares covering 2 degrees of longitude and 1 degree of latitude each. Each is given a numerical ID of 00 to 99. A third grid level further subdivides each square into 576 further subsquares that utilize a double letter ID of AA to XX. These subsquares cover less than 20 square miles at mid-latitudes, more at the equator, much less near the pole, 
giving a good general geographic location of the station. It's fun and easy to collect contacts from every continent. When you run out of continents, you can start collecting countries. Then you can try to make contacts in every grid square. When working FT8, the free WSJTX software gives you a way to color code incoming stations based on your personal preferences. In the settings menu, you can assign specific colors to stations that you've not yet made contact with based on the station's zone and grid ID, which is a part of the digital information sent by each station. I have my color preferences set to give me a quick idea of whether or not the station may be in a country or zone that I haven't contacted yet. So my color map on my computer background is just a quick way to reference what the colors mean without having to go into the settings menu. A lot of hams simply have this information tacked up on a cork board in their shack. I just don't have the wall space available. So I use my computer background as a virtual cork board. To find out what your grid location is, check out the link in the video description. If you want to know more about FT8 or other digital modes of amateur radio communication, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Let me know in the comments what your grid location is or what your favorite digital mode to work is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see featured in the future. Until next time, this is KD2REU saying 73.